Yes. All right, ready. Uh, flash chromatography for THC Woo! remediation part. Luke's uh, explain. All right, welcome, welcome, How welcome. Do do? We appreciate you being here because we're going to continue flash chromatography. Flash chromatography. Flash, and that is not with THC that remediation. Is, and we were talking about flashing the flash. Would uh, he? Be, would he still we, be red? He well, if you flash the flash, I mean, you could probably separate out all the colors. Like red would come out first. There you go. <laughs> Get blue coming out. <laughs> you know, because flash is blood is blue. Okay, so but if you hey, do you remember flash? Do you remember Flash Gordon? Yes. Okay, you remember the blue blood? Yeah. Oh yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I love the I love Flash Gordon. I think I was like three years old watching Flash Gordon. I'm like, what is all that blue blood? What is <laughs> that that is amazing okay, stuff. Okay, so Spock had green blood, right? Did he? Yeah. Oh, Because he w his blood was copper-based, I think. Okay. Ours is iron-based. So what would a blue blood See, copper is be? too soft. It's, it's not. I, iron is, it, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's too soft of, of, of an acid, so it doesn't. It's not going to really okay. sorb and I don't know. So I don't know. Well, sorry, po I apologize. This is we just went right. <laughs> That's okay. We are <laughs> never going to get this done, are we? Oh, no, we are. That's <laughs> fine. Okay. Okay. The, what I was going to say is, if we did flash the flash and remediate all the color, would he be the invisible flash? Uh, prob probably yes. He would be okay. the invisible so, flash. So <laughs> that's for you to tell us. Um, okay. James is probably going to edit all this out. He's gonna be like, <laughs> no one's going to want to hear this. James is like, <laughs> oh, like, please, just stop shoot it. me. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> kill okay, me, kill me now. Flash chromatography. Okay, applications. We talked about it. Minor cannabinoids, pesticide remediation, and plant material isolation of various mm -hmm. kinds. We did. Okay? A lot of people like to do the flash chromatography for that and you can use that for hemp or you can use that for flavonoids you can use it for any of the polyphenols for example with the material isolation you know things that people really care about like that are expensive you use chromatography to really isolate and separate out those polyphenols chromatography is essentially the separation of liquid components into separate fractions they're they're ge they're geographically separated they're in separate containers wow that's a that's a key aspect uh of uh, of chromatography and uh, a, t a, a typical separation includes specifications of two distinct items equipment and methods and oh. method and we talked in uh, one of our previous talks about you know all about what the column was we kind of went into detail yep. about what the <clears throat> definitions were Basics. there's a lot of jargon around this uh you know chromatography yep. area and you know it, it can get really confusing and so we kind of went into all what all that means and right. uh, and dependent on where your ego resides which word you use for stationary phase or medium yes or I, I prefer eluent <laughs> <laughs> exactly. which one is your favorite you just probably what is your favorite filler filler <laughs> 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 well, uh, okay, all right. The filler. <laughs> that's the, that's for the stationary phase. The gunk that's for that the you put chromatographic in. Chromatographic metia. That gunk that you put in the column. Or oh, the, the gunk. The gunk. As opposed to the goo. Or <laughs> the stationary okay. phase or Let's medium. <laughs> okay, here we go. What is the components? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of go through. Look at that. On a very beautiful piece high of equipment. level, what each of the pieces of equipment are. Okay. And uh, since we went over in detail with what goes into the column, what are the types of mobile phases or what are the types of solvents you would use and why you'd use them? Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to talk about what are the components of the flash. May I just say just system. holy stainless steel Batman. Holy stainless steel Batman. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, look at that. It's got a lot of stainless. Uh, in, in reality, these parts right here, are, are they're, they're insulated, okay, uh, okay. because they're, they're warm and cold. Um, but that's essentially what the Pier 99 looks like. We just took that off. Uh, James actually is a freaking awesome renderer. He just pushes the render button. It's like everything looks like, wow, look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> Could but you that do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> Re-render him? <laughs> oh, he does Good that idea. regularly. He, he did that already. <clears throat> this isn't really what I look He's like. He's got rose-colored glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're going to go over all those. Okay, so <clears throat> the mobile phase reservoir. Oh. Yeah, uh, it's not oh. just a container. A we're lot of speaking French. It, it's not just a container. It can be. It, there, it's what? a specified container. It's okay? a mobile it's temperature control reservoir. It's a uh, pressure controlled. Uh, preconditions are the eluent, so it can be pumped. So it, it preconditions mm -hmm. it. It cools everything down. It, usually, it's it's very controlled in terms of the pressure that's in there. 
Um, <clears throat> there's, it's important that there's little to no flow restriction. You don't want to have, uh, you know, like a, if you're sucking on a straw, for example, you don't want to pinch the straw and, you know, because you won't get any fluid out of it. So that's the key aspect of a mobile phase reservoir. Unless it's a McDonald's straw. The, those are suckers are big. Yeah, and they always break. I know, but they're big. Okay, so uh, (laughs) important to have little to no flow restriction um, and level indicators, both visual and electronic, allow automation and ease of use. So, um, you know, on a lot of our systems, what we have is uh, we have a visual indicator, which is right here. And that's just a, it'll tell you what the level is in the tank. You know, that's, you know, people like to have stainless. The problem with stainless is you can't see through it, right? What? So oftentimes you use a beautiful uh, other items like sensors or glass sensors or ultrasonic sensors or laser sensors or things like that to really tell you what's going on inside of that sure. vessel. Um, and uh, like, a, for example, on our clear still, we use an ultrasonic sensor at the inlet, uh, you know, to tell you, for example, you know, how much is in the inlet reservoir. Okay. <clears throat> now, interestingly enough, the... Inlet reservoir for the clear still, which is our white film distillation, that also is doing the exact same thing. It's temperature controlling it. It's conditioning the fluid before it's being pumped. So the whole purpose of it is to wow. is to make sure that it's 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 in the right <coughs> condition. Okay, so must have had the same designer. Uh, yeah, I think you got to have. Yeah, you got to have that. Yeah, it's it's kind of like fundamentals, right? <laughs> so, um, what kinds of pumps are used for flash chromatography? Okay. Essentially, there are three different types of pumps, and there may be others, and I'll, I'll kind of go over what that means, but right here you have the eluent pump, or this is the main pump, um, and that, that usually makes up the, the most of the flow, and then you have uh, what they call a gradient pump. The gradient pump is here, uh, and you can see that if you want to have uh, you know, a very, a very uh, rich gradient, okay, so what happens is you take the flow from here. Whoops. You take the flow from here and you mix it with the flow from there and you do that online at high pressure so that this is a high pressure mixing system that's a key, key aspect you can see this pump is smaller than this pump so this particular unit can do shallow gradients okay, okay. meaning you know it can have a uh, 90 percent uh, solvent a and 10 percent solvent b or maybe um, it can do 20 percent solvent a uh, or 20% solvent B and and 80% solvent A. Okay, and you can you can change uh, the percentage of the solvents online wow. as it's running on the fly. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to really do like what they call a deep gradient, where you'd go from like 0% A to 100% A with this type of system because uh, the <clears throat> there's a thing called the delay volume, and oh. that's going to really increase the amount of time in between each of your injections. Sure. So you don't want to do that. But so, don't um, do that. so this is made specifically this way. Now, if you guys come to us and say, hey, look, we would like you guys to develop a separation for us or whatever, um, we, we're, we're offering that as a, as a service for you guys. Um, you know, um, and if there was a specific thing that we needed to do to the equipment to, to, to deliver that to you to really make that happen, um, you know, we would we would modify the system to make a deeper gradient if we needed it. But in this case, this is for THC remediation. That's perfectly fine. Awesome. Yeah, and then the other pump is the injector pump. Now, some uh, some companies don't use injector pumps, but uh, what we do is we have a pump and we inject also at high pressure. So this injector pump is always running. It's always circulating the fluid, and then there's a little injector here, and when when that injector turns on, it the sample goes into the column. So there's I'll a show column you. right yeah, there. Yeah, there's a column right there. So there's actually three pumps on this system. Now, there can be other pumps. Uh, in fact, some of our systems have other types of well, pumps. Well, there are on three there. types of pumps. There are three like types of pumps, yeah. Yep. There, there are other pumps, though, that can be added onto this. One would be a CIP system, CIP pump, okay. for just running for uh, clean and cleaning, place. cleaning in place. Now, what some people do is use this uh, this gradient pump for mm-hmm. that CIP. They'll turn that on, and then that will clean everything. So that that works out per, pretty nice. Um, a lot of times, some people want to have like a metering pump on here. So there, we we also have metering pumps that are available. So just let us know what you need, and, and we can put different pumps on here. <clears throat> so why do you need a, f- a pump for flash chromatography at all? Uh, lot, there's lots of 
chromatography that goes on where there's no pump at all. Right. And what they do is that here's the column, and this is, of course, packed with media, right? And there's a solvent. There's a mobile phase that occurs here. Now, what happens, they put this, they just literally, they squirt the, uh, yeah, the sample in on the top, and it just starts starts coming down by gravity. So that that is a very old and very well known way to do chromatography and in fact uh, a lot of like organic chemists they will use that to you know prepare maybe you know uh half a gram pure quantities of whatever they made because it takes longer if you're not using that yeah it takes it takes a lot longer (laughs) and there's a whole skill to packing and everything but if you're in the laboratory and you want something quick and dirty and you don't want to have to do a whole entire separation. You're only doing it once to show that, hey, I did this once, like an academic. Uh, Then, (laughs) then you can, (laughs) then you can, uh, then you can definitely uh, not use one of these. You Uh, use something more manual. You, you, you heard that, right? I did hear that. That was like, little knife. (laughs) Stick it in. Like an academic. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. Sorry. <coughs> well, never send never send an academic to do reproducible work. That's what I say. <laughs> all right, um, and that's gonna that's gonna tick off all of the. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well done. Well done. Okay. It I didn't mean it. It was a joke. <laughs> as chief revenue officer, that makes my job more difficult. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, what is an injector? What is an injector? Uh, well, it, it is a, a valve, essentially, um, and what it does is it has ports. These are little ports here, mm-hmm. and those are actually fittings, okay? They're usually compression fittings, so they it can withstand pressure, mm-hmm. and the ports can be really large or really small depending on the size of the chromatography. Okay, so um, they can be really big, uh, you know, to, to make sure that there's not a lot of pressure coming out of them, or they can be really small for analytical chemistry. So um, the injector may be a fixed loop or maybe a high pressure pump. In our case, I just said we have a high pressure pump. Um, in a loop case, uh, this would actually be a six port injector instead of a four port injector. Whoa. So we're, we're actually uh, you know, simplifying the system yeah. by using a pump. Okay. And not a six port injector. Okay, so. and using different vernacular, you say injector, I would say like a squirter. Yeah, squirter. Th- this can be a squirter. <laughs> That'd be good. So here's the squirter. Okay, um, can I can I solve this? Okay, hang on. Just a second. I can't. I can't <laughs> modify this. Don't. It's a PDF. Oh man, yeah. that's terrible. Okay. So yes. Um, <clears throat> so that's the squirter. Okay. So let, let's just kind of go through this. Here you can see that the valve actually switches what the f- what is in fluid communication. Okay. Okay. So take a look at this. The pump is pumping. It's yep. coming through here. This valve is now connecting these two ports, Mm -hmm. and then it's going to the recycles. In this case, the injector is pumping here, and now it's going into the column. So that's when these two are connected. Now the valve switches. It actually turns rotary, rotary, and uh, the pump is now connected to the column. You can see that. Oh, yeah. And now the injector is connected to the recycle. Gotcha. So that's what the valve does. So here I have a little illustration of that. Just like I said, here's here's the LUN pump, um, and then here that's connected to the column in this position A, and that's where the injector is connected to the recycle, and the LUN pump is connected to the column. So all you're doing is pivoting that a you're quarter turn. Pivoting all clockwise. you're doing. Yep, that's correct. And then in this case, you're you're connecting here the column to the injector pump. Mm-hmm. So you can see you turn on this injector pump, the the sample that's in the injector <coughs> or the squirter. <laughs> is going to is going to squirt onto the column your sample. Perfect. And then you're going to switch it back to the eluent pump so that the eluent now is is or the mobile phase is now is pushing the pushing the sample through the column. Gotcha. So that's that's all it is. Should be pretty simple. <coughs> um, <coughs> you know, and um, you know it's pretty simple. It, it, these valves can get very complex. Um, we, when you increase the number of ports in them, and then you start connecting ports. Gotcha. So, uh, but this is really simple uh, way to look at an injector. Okay. So, what is a flash chromatography column? We've already we talked about that last time. We but did. Just just to go over it because it is a major component. It's a vessel that holds the chromatographic media, or stationary phase, or media. 
Or gunk. Or gunk or goo that you have. Um, it's the particles, essentially. Yes. Axial, compre in the, uh, axial compression on the media. We talked about that last time where there's a, there's, a, there's a piston in here that pushes up and keeps that media really compressed. There's some fritz in there. We discussed that. We discussed the, discussed the in input ports and the output ports. Yep. This media is selective, and there's a separation of a sample introduced by the injector, which takes place on the column, and the aluin sample flows through, and it eludes the sample from the column. Yeah, just like we saw in the last thing. Yeah. With the way it turned. Right, right. That so cool. that, that's the column. And you can see how the column is kind of the heart of the system, right? Boom, boom. Yeah, boom, you don't want to you boom, don't want to clog that one up. No. Right. Otherwise, do not do not clog that up. Although, uh, it's quite easy to change out the packing. Okay, you just you just take that top off. You just press this piston will go like pop it up, and uh, then it just you just change that change it that way. You just get and out. You pour new particles in. You put it in, and then slam it slam that piston back up, and you should be set here. Oh. Oops, oops, here, I got another ah. call. Oh, <laughs> That's five bucks in the kitty jar. <laughs> <laughs> I Do I have this on? I had to pony up last oh, time. <laughs> I, oh, okay, there we are, silent mode on. It happens every time, doesn't it? Yeah, oh. either you or me. <laughs> but thank you for the, keep those cards and letters coming. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, you, dumb. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, oh, whoa. Here it is. This Look is at this. awesome. Okay, what is this? This is a, a simple, simple diagram, diagram of a separation on a flash column. Okay, go. Okay, I don't know what column C is, but <clears throat> that, that's just... So here we have, here <laughs> we have a, a spreadsheet. A, an, an injector it's here. the third one over. And time equals zero here, and we're flowing through the column, right? Okay. And we just injected this green. Now, yellow and blue make... Or yellow and blue make green, right? Sure, yep. Okay. I'm colorblind. <clears throat> so uh, you can actually take a dye and do this like in a little column. You can actually see it. It's pretty cool. Okay. So you got the green on the top. You can see it. Yep. And then, uh, then, then some time, uh, time goes by and it's still flowing. And see this flow here, this main element flow is actually pushing this stuff along. Okay. So you can see now it's the blue is starting to separate out. Are you gonna put the? That, you're gonna put I've, your money on the blue or the yellow? Uh, I'm all blue all the way. You're gonna do blue, okay? Yep. I think you're gonna win, okay? Now we, now we, uh, as we time goes on, now you can see the separation start to start to really take place. Oh, yeah. You can see it separating out. Yeah. You can also see that these bands here are getting wider and wider. Yeah. That's because they're diluting. It's diluting all the time, and it's uh, so that's what we call band broadening oh. in um, in chromatography. And the more uh, efficient your chromatography column, th the narrower those will be. Oh, <coughs> okay. So, okay. So you can see now they're starting. This one's starting to migrate a lot faster. It's just it likes this mobile phase a lot better than it does the packing that's in the, in there. Yeah. And the yellow is like, oh, I kind of like that packing. I'm gonna hang out here for a little while. <laughs> And it starts to interact. Kind of like a hot says, tub. Just you know, it was chill. good to see you, but I think I'm leaving now. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of lingering a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and so you can see here. Now, this is my little, uh, an eye. Okay. So it's looking down here. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> that's the detector. <laughs> that's okay? an eye looking that's down. A little, little tiny oh, eye. I like, hey, well, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was really good. There's looking. It looks like a sextant. I was like, okay, where's the ship? <laughs> now here and right here in this thing right here, you can see the yellow is still on the column. <clears throat> it doesn't see the yellow; it only sees the blue. Oh, and <clears throat> and then it says, "Oh, there's blue coming out. Switch this valve over to the blue container." Go, and that's where it goes. And then uh, then the yellow comes out and it says, "Oh, I see now. It's the yellow. Switch this valve to the yellow container." Okay. So this is called a selector valve here. Yeah. And that's how you do separations. You start it off with a green. And now you have a blue and a yellow. You should change the color of the selector valves. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you mean a different <laughs> color? You mean red, yellow, green, blue? Yeah, because that makes it confusing for <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. I'm simple. And then here you see you can do another injection here. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. okay. Now, theoretically, <clears throat> you could probably do another injection right here. Oh. Or even right here. Okay, so you can and so do you can just keep simultaneous on doing this. injections. Yes, exactly. You can keep on injecting. Interstitially as space them. Interstitially, as yes. As it as it goes through the interstitial space. Ah, good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um. So, oh, wow. what is uh? How are the components of the sample detected in flash chromatography? 
Now, um, How most, are they? most of them are detected with a UV lamp. Oh. Okay, and we all know, um, you know, like uh, some some sort of, you know, some pigments will absorb the UV yep. and some then do not absorb the UV. Okay. Okay, so I get burned uh, because, because of my skin. I do not have anything that's going to absorb the UV except for occasional freckles. Okay, so that's, that, is, uh, that is an absorption compound. The UV lamp is the exact same thing. As the sample comes through this, the UV lamp is, is, is beaming through the tube. Okay. And there's a little detector over here. And when, when absorbing compounds come past this, it says, oh, I see it. There it is. Boom. Look at that. And, it come, and then it leaves. Whoops. Oh. Okay. Well, and then it leaves. So it's because it's flowing, it'll start. It'll start. Because it's flowing, it'll start, and then uh, you know it'll get bigger, and then it'll get smaller. It just registers what it's seeing. Yeah, it just registers From what it's seeing. From the UV lamp right, exactly. to the detector. But the, the reason you have these peaks here is because, say, the blue comes through first, right? It's going to come in. It's going to be really dilute, and then it's going to be really, really concentrated, and then it's going to be more dilute. That's why you see this peak. Gotcha. You know? A lot of people are wondering, well, why is it a peak? Well, that's because it's kind of spread out, okay. it's starting to dilute itself, and, and it, it starts off with a very small, it's a broadened, yeah. It's so it starts off with a very small concentration on the edges, and then it gets really concentrated okay, in the middle. Okay, question. Yes. Um, on these charts that you have under component A and component B, yeah. do you call those a chromatograph or a chromograph? Now, this one, they are not, they're not a chromatograph. Uh, they are not a chromograph either. These are UV uh, traces, okay? Oh. And it's just a, if I was to take a, any compound, like even coffee, and stick it into there and just let it sit there, it would give me a trace. And it shows you where it absorbs and where it does not absorb. Oh, okay. Okay, so... If I was going to develop a method, for example, yep. okay, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say, "Hey, detector, I want you to absorb everything at 350 and set this detector at 350." What would happen? And my compounds came by. Nothing. I would not see anything. Nothing. And I'd be like, "Oh, do I separate them? They would be perfectly separated, but I would not see them." It happens to my brain function about four o'clock. A.M. or P.M.? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> P.M. Okay. All right. 4 a.m. I'm like, yeah, That has to go. do with that martini that you have every day at 3.30. We're, we're, this is a okay. lot. <laughs> many times, uh, many types of detectors. Um, <clears throat> UV detectors detect a, a components that absorb UV light. Mm -hmm. um, visible detectors detect sample components that absorb visible light. So like yellow and green. Okay. If I had a <coughs> UV lamp here, um, it would probably be less selective than if I used a visible lamp here and said, hey, you know, detect out here at 350, for example, okay. because this is visible region here in the wavelength. So this is UV region. This is visible region. So that would read red flash, blue flash, yellow flash, but it would not read invisible flash. Uh, right. No invisible flash. Red foot, green foot. <laughs> <laughs> red fish, green fish, blue fish, blue fish, red fish, green fish. New no fish. Fi no fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, mass selective detectors. What's cool about mass selective detectors, but they're really expensive, but they will that select cool about actually, <laughs> they will actually select the mass. So, oh. and some of them are so accurate that you'll be able to tell exactly without knowing what's in there. You'll actually be able to tell uh, and identify what the compound is. Wow. So that's pretty cool. That's hmm. called a, uh, well, a QTOF or what they call a quadrupole time of flight. And we actually have one in our lab. A quadrupole time of flight. Yes. Yeah, a mass selective detector. A mass selective detector. Yeah. We have one. We have we have one. We have two, actually. So the other one is a triple, quadru cool. triple quadrupole. What is the coolest thing you measured in that? Um, well, we did, we did a identification of flavonoids. Oh. Yeah. So that, that's really important because then you'll be able to tell, important. you know, what the flav, where, what flavonoids are and how to, what they are, you know, and, and how to separate them. So there are also many more types. I could not tell you what the flavonoids were unless I had standards and then I could use those standards with a UV detector and try to tell you, but so it's not that, that selective. there's different ones. Yeah. It there's different detectors. Right. Exactly. So just like visible, uh, like if I, I if I told this UV detector to only look at here, 
Yeah. Um, it, it wouldn't you be able to see, see anything, right? There's so there's there. a selectivity associated with a detector. Gotcha. And there's also a selectivity associated with that chromatographic media. You use them both together to get the best That's situation. That's why you pay for methods. and. That's why you pay for methods. That's why you pay a lot of money for <coughs> different types of detectors and things like that. And, so and we do, too. I hope that that was some, uh, you know. This was awesome. I tried to keep it really simple. Uh, but, you know, most of the people will use a UV lamp with a UV detector. Um, and they'll flow, uh, you know, the components past it, and it says, oh, I see the component, and then, then the detector's going to register a signal. Yes. And the signal um, looks Gaussian like that. It's got a Gaussian. It's Gaussian. It's Gaussian. It, it, the shape is Gaussian. It's that Gaussian. is a Gaussian shape, right? right. It, it's got a peak. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's <laughs> move on. Okay, so how do you get pure components of a sample from flash chromatography? Now, this is where... The selection takes place, right? So the detector now yep. is is going to say, "Hey, the blue component is coming through." Put now, it in the blue now, how bucket. how does it actually do that? And it uses this valve here. So you can see here, this valve is co connecting the fluid that's coming from the detector Ooh. from this detector here, yep. uh, and then it's connecting it to these, th you know, different containers. So right now, it's connected to container three. Yeah, it's connected, and this is the container three right here. Yeah. This is container two, and this is container one. So let's assume. And there's also a recycle, which which goes back to here. So, so container one would be blue, container two would be yellow. Right. In the previous, and container three would be nothing. I mean, neutral. you wouldn't use it. Yeah, you just maybe if it if you didn't get a good separation and there was still some, yeah. it would they were kind of coming together it's a little the bit. Oops, the green oops bucket. Right. <laughs> the oops bucket. Yeah, the waste one. Oh, whatever. Shit. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Um, the position of the four-way valve is selected <coughs> based on the component that is eluding from the column, and the detector tells it when to move. Spin. So here's an example. Here's the like detector that. right here, yep. and it's connecting here. Um, and that's, that's because the detector is saying, hey, I have a component, uh, component three, and I need it to go into container three. Mm -hmm. And you, you, have to, you have to tell it, okay, change it now. Okay. Okay. Um, you have to then, you know, tell this, change it now because I see, could I see this second component, or I see the first component and I want to go into this container one. Okay. You know, change it now, right? So, um, so the detector is the commander, and it says, "You go here, you go here, you go here," and they just do it. Okay. It's pretty sweet. And they don't even have to say, "Captain, may I?" Um, Captain, may I? Or uh, no, they do not. <laughs> What's the proper response for Captain May I? Yes, you may. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> and then what does the English teacher say? Yes. Yes, you may. Yes. You okay. May. Uh, <laughs> important considerations when purchasing a flash chromatography system. Okay. So. Oh, sorry. Look, if you Thank if you, you know what you need done, uh, you know a lot of people have. Let's say they have different. They have all kinds of ideas about what they're going to try to get out of a system and it's very important that you uh, identify what your goals are uh, there are some <coughs> systems that you can buy like the pure 99 for a specific application like thc remediation or pesticide remediation or whatever sure um, there's a lot of people though however who want to want to use the systems in a versatile way and say okay i'm going to create a method for separation of this unique cannabinoid okay right. That would be a method development effort, um, which would require a new SOP, a new method, CBG, a new column, CBN, possibly, whatever, CBC, things like that, yeah. yeah. Um, and some of those methods have been developed, and some of them have not. Um, so what is a good method right now that we know for sure we can do is the THC CBD. Um, the, the, we also have a very selective media for, um, like, um, cannabinoids and CBN. So we can separate out CBN from, awesome. from just about anything. Um, if you are talking about... I want to separate out CBC, CBG, and uh, CBD all into different buckets. Okay, that would be possible, but you have to. You'll go a lot slower. Yeah. So that that's the thing, because you you're trying to do more with one thing. So that would mean okay. So we need to then you need to define how much CBC do I want to produce every day? Yep. Right. And then you need to then we would have to work with you. Okay. Here's the column that you need for that. The size of the column. Here's how much you need. You know, would it be better like to that. remediate out the THC first? You uh, maybe you could do that. Perhaps. And then you unless unless the CBC and the C the CBC and the THC co-eluded. 
Yeah, which they do it, because sometimes. the CBC... Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. I, I don't even know if they do. I, I don't know exactly well, if they do or not. Well, I am work by rumor. I'm not a scientist. Oh, by rumor. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have heard that that is the case. Uh, we also It get depends on the column. It depends on the whatever. Oh, so you, you have to specify those <coughs> conditions in order to really... The other request we get a lot on chromatography is today is is remediating d9 from d8 yes and th that can be done right now um but it, it requires um a um it's not very efficient okay um and it requires a very long column to make that happen so uh yeah it, it, that is something that can be done and the other thing is uh right now it's going to require that you use water water and water is a pain uh, not that it can't be done. Okay. It still is a pain. So. And again, by rumor, you have to use water because there is no polarity between the 8 and the 9. Well, possibly that's the case. Um, but I would, I would also say, however, however, I would say that it's important that you look at it from a methods development standpoint and say, okay, well, um, you, know, uh, you know, I can develop a method that doesn't yep. use water. Oh. So that that would be the best thing. It's well, just that would be people cool haven't thing. gotten to that yet. So. so if you have, let us know. We'd yeah. love to hear. And and the reason I bring these things up is because the SOPs and the methods are critical. We've got a great tool, a great equipment. There's really good flash chromatography systems out there, yeah. in, including you know, the one that you've developed. But the SOPs and the methods tell it what to do. Yeah, right, and tell you. So if you have a detailed SOP, um, with some with some good training and yeah. some good training exercise with the right facilities, um, you know those are the things that you need to really think about when you're purchasing, and we we provide all that. Um, do I have customers for the stuff that I'm going to be producing? That's, that's, the, that's key. One. That is the number one. Yeah, GMP or no GMP, you kind of need to understand because you, you're when you d order your system, you need to know whether to order a GMP package with the, with the right. equipment. Yep. it's going to be more expensive because. You have to certify everything, you know, every, all the materials have to be certified. It comes with a whole documentation pack. It's yep. just more, more stuff. So, um, so that's something you need to understand. What volumes do I need to remediate now and in the future? So, yeah. so if I was, uh, suppose I need to do uh, 10 grams a day right now. Well, okay. And I want to buy a system. Uh, and, but I know that I want to scale up to, you know, four or five kilos a day or five kilos, uh, you know, an hour, for example, I would need to think about that when I went sure. into buying a system. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want to put something in so small that I'm not going to win the race, right? Exactly. Okay. So, what is the consumables cost? You know, what's the cost of the of of all the solvents and uh, all the media and all that stuff? And how do how do you can I, how can I clean it? All that all that uh, stuff has to be thought about because it goes into your cost. And what is the consumable? Because even in some of these, you have to replace out the entire column, whereas the one that you showed ours. Um, you can just replace the media. Yeah, so you yes, there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, and of course, the media, if you can change that out the media, it's, it's less expensive than yep. if you're getting a column typically. Um, a lot of people like to solve sell their sell you their <coughs> columns and then you know and then you have to throw them away and then they're not really remediated. Um, but they're inexpensive too. So they kind of price it that way so they're still making money, but you're having to d it's a, you know and then um, the solvents actually for, for flash chromatography systems, the solvents are actually the the major, major, yeah. major sure. cost, um, and usually that's that's the where a lot of people break down and say, "I'm not going to do this because the solvents are so so many solvents, right?" Yeah. So that's of course what the Pure ninety nine offers in terms of its advantage, because it eliminates uh, like eight, a, at least ninety five percent of the solvent usage. So wow. yeah. And then what's your scale-up plan, and do I have HPLC and available availability of scaled labor? You know, a lot of people who do, like, flash chromatography systems, they, they really want to sell you the, their analytical system because yeah. that's where they're making all their money. You know, they, they, know, that they know that you're not going to be making, uh, you know, you're not, they're not going to make as much money off of, uh, you know, like a sale. They know that you're going to go and try to shop around all the materials and everything. They, they know all that. Um, so, but, but they, they're, they're really definitely, um, after that, that sale. So if you hear pitches from, you know, various, you know, people out there, they have the analytical system and then they have the, the, uh, non-analytical system. So, uh, which is the preparative system and they really want to sell you both, A teacher. But, uh, but the reality is you actually need them. You, yeah. you need them both. So you do. there's nothing wrong with that. I no. think it's, it's perfectly fine. I agree. 
Okay, um, what are the key pros and cons of flash chromatography? So, so now we're going to kind of put it all together uh, for you. So the pros, uh, the flash chromatography, because they use those large particles, we talked about yep. that. You don't need uh, pumps that are super expensive. You don't need high pressure pumps. Uh, it's low pressure. Um, the stationary phase itself, because it's not mono dispersed particles, um, which are more expensive, you can use, uh, you know, lower cost stationary phase. Gotcha. So, um, and then um, high loadability, uh, you're able to really load a lot uh, onto the column because you can add more stationary phase in there because it's not costing you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Um, high amount of injected and better production rate. So that's typically the pros associated with um, with with flash chromatography. Cons. The cons are the high flow rate, which produces a lot of solvent usage, yep. uh, low efficiency, which uh, if you need a high efficiency to separate out a couple of the materials, you're probably not going to really be able to do that with flash chromatography. Mm. Um, and then a long tail, which we didn't really go into this, but what you know, how long does it take to get out of the column, right? right. Um, and then um, extremely high solvent usage leading to a high cost. So those are the pros and the cons of, of flash chromatography. We did touch on the long tail because you could interstitially space those injections if you chose to, even though it takes a long time to get through the column. Y you could. You just have to have, uh, as long as they are not overlapping, right. uh, the, the, the components are not overlapping, you can, you can always add in, you know, um, you can always add in a better selectivity or, or different chromatographic gotcha. media to get better selectivity so that they wouldn't overlap. Okay. So in that, that, but the long tail also has to do with uh, how well it's packed. It's complicated. Oh. Uh, what the volume of the system, it's, it's not uh, perfectly straightforward. But uh, that's the main uh, items related to the pros and cons. Very cool. So flash chromatography, I mean, uh, overall, it's a great way to separate out um, you know, different components of a system. Um, you have uh, readily available, uh, you know, equipment out there. You have readily available chromatographic media. Um, you just have to be, uh, you know, smart enough about it so that you can um, choose your method and then optimize that method so it's a lower cost system, okay? And Love so it. it's a lower cost of usage. Okay. So how does the Pure 99 overcome the drawbacks of the flash chromatography? It really is two things, okay? okay. First of all, the system is made so that it can be used at high pressure. So if you need to get more efficiency by using a smaller particle diameter, your pressure is going to go up because you're using smaller particles. Mm -hmm. It has the capability to do that. Wow. So you can use flash particles, which are the 30 to 60 micron or 60 to 120 micron, the big particles with large yep. distribution. You can use those in there. But you can also pack this thing with five micron particles and get high efficiency separations. Wow. So that it's a it's you a capability. Yeah, it's a capability. A lot of the flash chromatography systems that you see out there, they're um, you know, they're they're made to be only low pressure. So it doesn't give you the upper capability. And so if you want to use the system in, in a versatile way and you think that in the you want to use different applications with it for different items, okay? Yep. If that's your goal then you probably want to have uh, a versatile system. The second items associated with the versatility is the pump in the pump flow rate. Um, it, you know, I can't, I can't emphasize enough that you need to have enough flow rate coming out of these pumps so that you can speed up the separation, uh, you know, and get, get a good productivity rate out of it. Okay. If, you're, if you are buying a system with uh, a total maximum flow rate of, say, 300 mils a minute, right? Yeah. And uh, it takes, you know, it takes 20 minutes to do a separation or 45 minutes to do a separation. You're, and you're maxing out at 300. It's like you can't even speed it up, okay? Wow. Yeah. If you had something, then uh, a piece of equipment, then that would, you know, be operating at 7 liters a minute. You could do the separation and then speed up the rest of it, the cleaning part of it, oh. and reduce the overall time and then increase the throughput quite extensively that so if you don't have efficiency. the capability yep. you can't do that and gotcha. so you're stuck with low productivity gotcha. so you know i think that the capabilities and the specs on a system really do matter in this case because uh because of throughput and versatility um so those are the things and then solvent is recycled online in this system it's a closed loop it eliminates the primary cost of separation it's amazing i mean i've run this particular system, you know, for two days and had less than a five gallon bucket of, of solvent being used. Wow. It's crazy. And you, I actually recovered that five gallons. So, 
It's uh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I know. Normally, with a system like that running at seven liters per minute, which is the uh, upper limit of that particular system, actually eight liters total would be the the maximum flow rate for that particular system, the Pier ninety nine. Um, you know, you can literally, basically, you can run it all day. It's crazy. It normally you would fill up a room this size. I mean, we have a pretty big room here. You'd fill up a, a tanker car with, uh, you know, at seven liters a minute, yeah, you'd probably a have a tanker car filled up by that's the end of the day. And so you, you, you have to do all that. And so you, we're actually separating all that online, and then we're using density controls and flow rate controls. to And, um, and you really only use two days, five-gallon buckets. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what we were doing with our particular one. We had a little tiny bit of THC and a lot of CBD, so we, we were doing it. You bang, know, bang, we were bang. doing it fast. Gotcha. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but normally, yeah, I think you would normal. That's a normal situation. Yeah, with our particular um, eluent composition or our particular sure. solvent composition, if you change the composition, you you it would change it would change the recycle flow rate. Gotcha. Okay, so if I used a different one, I'd have to change the temperature. So th the other complicating, uh, well, it's a complicating factor associated with the the pure ninety nine is that you have the separation, you get that done, but then you also have the, you also have the distillation that's taking place on the, place sure. on the other side. So you want oh to yeah. optimize both of those methods. You bet. And if you do that, it's going to take the overall cost way down. So that's, um, that's the key thing. So the last item here is we're going to train you on flash chromatography. You buy something from us, we're going to train you. Um, sample prep, HPLC testing school, contract applications development, and detailed SOPs. They'll all be yours. Um, the applications development side, we just, uh, just, I just added that in there because we will do that. Um, you know, we intend to, uh, you know, so if you have those applications, um, you know, put them our way and we'll see what we can do with it, you know, yeah. cause we have systems, we have people, we have different types of uh, products, we, you know, no guarantees type of thing, you know, uh, we'll because it would be research. You. Yeah. But it would be, it would be research for you. So, Hey, I have this dream of doing this particular thing uh will you do it for me and then and then sell me a, a met, sell me a piece of equipment then then i can do so typically we'd have an applications development contract that'd be tied to an equipment uh contract yeah well and that works because many of you have talked to us about specific applications for clients who've come to you and said hey i need this i want to buy this from you and you're like I, how do I do that? Right, right. And, and right, <laughs> that's a huge offering yeah. because Dr. John is offering to do that with you. Right. Our, our team, we've got a good team. Right. So, yeah, I think on the other, I mean, in terms of the Pure 99 um, right now, THC, CBD, that one's pretty much ready to go. Um, and then, you know, the other ones that you have, you know, come in with your requests and we'll see what we can do. That's awesome. Yeah. Well done. All right. Flash chromatography. Flash chromatography explained. Well All done. Right. Thank you for being here. We will see you next time. Keep those cards and letters coming. Let us know what questions you have. This was awesome. Well, All right. Well done. Yeah, no problem. Take care. See you guys. Are you stuck in your hemp or cannabis business? Are you not reaching your processing goals? Here at Extract Lab, we offer a free 20-minute CBD jam session. A CBD jam session is a conversation with an industry expert, not a sales call. A conversation where you can talk to us about whatever issues you are having right now and where you are stuck. We will help you uncover any issues you are currently having in your business, create a solution to fit your current scale, develop a future scale-up plan based on your needs, and help you make your processing goals a reality all while getting your business plan back on track. Schedule your free 20-minute CBD Jam session at 1-651-600-0036. Again, that number is 1-651-600-0036.